JT Shaver here with New Layer, and today we'll take a look at a pair of super portable lights in the Stella CLX10 and CL2000 from Light and Motion. To be honest, there are a lot of lights out there that aren't that much different from each other, but these lights go in a completely different direction than what most people are used to. Whether that's a misguided path or not, let's find out. The CLX10 is one of the most, if not the most portable light at this brightness, and the CL2000 does something that no other light that I've tested does. The CLX10 is about the size of a large cup and under three pounds, while the CL2000 is less than half that. The build quality on both lights is very good, being made with a combination of composite materials and metal. The Portrait Plus kit that I have also comes with a bunch of accessories and a carrying case. The carrying case is smaller than something like the one for the Nanlite 4 z 60, but what's crazy is the amount of stuff that you can fit inside. It would take me forever to list everything off that's included, and not everything that I'm showing you is included with the kit, but it does all fit inside the case. Both of these lights feature internal rechargeable batteries and also support AC power. When it comes to battery life, the CLX10 will last about 45 minutes at 100% power, but I think most people will be using this in the 40 to 60% range. The battery life is pretty much linear, meaning when you half the brightness, you get double the runtime. So around 50% power, you'd get 90 minutes of runtime, at 25% power, you'd get 180 minutes, and so on. The CL2000 gives you about 50 minutes at 100% power with a similar runtime increase as the light dims. If math isn't your strong suit, don't worry because the CLX10 does have a screen on the back that tells you the exact runtime remaining. You hold down the buttons to adjust this light in increments of 1% brightness, and you can display that in lumens or percent. Lumens really isn't all that practical, so I have it set to percentage all the time. You can also single press the buttons to jump between presets of 5, 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100%. This light runs completely silently from 0 to 40% brightness, and at 41% brightness, the fan turns on to low. On low, it's pretty much silent, but once you hit 61% or brighter, it turns on high. On high, the fan on this light is louder than most COB lights, and that's kind of the trade-off for the size because once you have something this small, you have to move more air to keep it cool. How bright these lights are at 100% kind of depends because the CLX10 has interchangeable tungsten and daylight heads, and they are close but not quite the same brightness. It's surprisingly quick and easy to change out the heads on this light. You flip open the safety, unscrew the bezel lock mount, and just pull the head straight out. There's indexing pins on both the heads and you just reverse the process to install the new one. Overall, it only takes about 20 or 30 seconds to swap the heads. I like this setup because it gives you the brightness of a single color light, but the flexibility of a bi-color light in a smaller form factor. The ease of swapping the heads in this light leads me to another thing that I like, which is the efficiency of changing out the modifiers. This light actually has multiple modifier mounts, as well as adapters for Profoto, Bowens, Ellen Chrome, and others which may seem complicated, but it's actually really quick and easy to swap them out. The first mount is the bezel lock mount, which uses a twisting motion and two locking pins to hold the modifiers in place. This is mainly used for the adapters to other mount types, as well as some legacy light and motion modifiers for previous lights. Next are the direct mount modifiers, which also push and twist into place, but they go directly over the COB and they just use a friction fit to stay put. Even though they don't technically lock in, they are still very secure and they're not gonna fall out accidentally. Some of the direct mount modifiers include the 50 degree beam angle lens, the dome diffuser, and the protective COB caps. Lastly are the traditional 82 millimeter press-on modifiers, which natively fit the CL2000 and some of the older lights, but can also be used with the CLX10 with an adapter. I think the most important modifier of this type is the 25 degree beam angle Fresnel, which turns both these lights into really compact and powerful spotlights. Both of these lights have an umbrella mount, and that's what I would suggest if you want soft light out of these, because it goes along with the portability and ease of setup theme. It may seem kind of complicated, but I promise it's really quick and easy once you become acquainted with all the modifiers. Another thing about the Bowens Profoto and Ellen Chrome adapters is that you can attach them directly to the light and use them as is, or you can attach those adapters directly to a light stand. By doing it that way, the light hangs off the back of the adapter and kind of acts as a counterweight, so that's a good way to go if you're using heavier modifiers. I measured the brightness and color accuracy of both heads in the CLX10 and got the following results. The tungsten head is advertised as 3200 Kelvin and I got 3268 Kelvin. The daylight head is advertised at 5600 Kelvin and I got 5696 Kelvin. So both heads are within 100 Kelvin of their advertised specs, which is great. 
The tungsten head outputs 3490 lux bare bulb at 1 meter and the daylight head outputs 4140 lux which is just under one third stop difference. With the 25 degree beam angle for Nell and the daylight head I got over 21,000 lux so you get more than two and a half full stops of brightness when you're using that attachment. The tungsten head has absolutely no green or magenta tint at all and the daylight head has a color correction number of 1.1 green, meaning it does have a medium magenta tint. Most daylight COBs I test come in around 0.5, so although this one is higher, LEDs green up a bit over time and adding modifiers also causes color temperature and tint shifts as well. For the tungsten head, I got a CRI and TLCI of 96.5 and 97, and for the daylight head, I got 95 and 94, which is great. I got an SSI of 83 on the tungsten head and 70 on the daylight head. The daylight measurement isn't quite as good as some other lights, but you shouldn't have any noticeable color rendering issues with either head. So the CLX-10 is about a third stop brighter than other 60 watt lights out there, while being one of the smallest and having an internal battery at the same time, which is impressive. The CL-2000 is a little bit of a different beast. For one, it's very not beastly in size, it's passively cooled so it's silent 100% of the time, and it's fully waterproof up to one meter. That obviously makes this light a good candidate for extreme conditions and underwater shoots. To maintain the water tightness, this light uses a kind of weird but very functional control system. It uses a single spring-loaded slider to turn it on and adjust the brightness. The CL2000 is also daylight balanced only unless you add some gels. It comes in at 5498 Kelvin with a maximum brightness of 986 lux. It has a CRI and TLCI of 91.3 and 94 and an SSI of 71. It also has a bit of a green tint so you may notice a difference if you're using this light and the CLX10 at the same time. The CLX10 also supports an optional remote for control. The remote also has an internal rechargeable battery which I like because charging outlets are plentiful and I hate carrying AA or AAA batteries everywhere I go. The CL2000 is more of a specialized light and I think it'll be best used in run and gun situations or when you need something to be submerged in water or other extreme conditions. By themselves, the CLX10 costs in the $1200 range while the CL2000 is around $500. I've seen the Portrait Plus kit that I have in the $1,600 to $2,000 range, depending on whether it's on sale. That kit includes both lights, a carrying case, some modifiers and adapters, and a set of gels, so it is a better value for the money. Overall, the CLX10 might be a good fit when size and portability are your main concerns. And the CL2000 is a tiny and reliable choice when you're shooting in wet conditions. While you can use these lights in a studio environment, I think they really excel when you're actively out in the field or when you need to focus the light because the lenses do a really good job at that. Before you go, leave a comment and let me know if you see yourself using these lights in your style of shooting. Links are in the description if you want to check these lights out further. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.